Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. This week's edition of the Political Stock Exchange features questions on whether people think it's okay for Arvind Kejriwal to be running the Delhi government from jail. Do they think someone like a Sunita Kejriwal should take over? Is there a sense of sympathy for Arvind Kejriwal or is he now being seen as a corrupt leader? Find out respondents uh, from Delhi and what they have to say in this week's edition of the Political Stock Exchange coming up on the news track tonight. Kejriwal in Tihar, up firefight. Should Sunita Kejriwal become chief minister? How should Delhi be governed now? Will Kejriwal arrest swing votes in Delhi? Biggest sentiment tracker before polls. Political stock exchange. While Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal is in Tihar jail, the Aam Aadmi Party continues to firefight. Delhi Minister Atishi today claimed that she was being blackmailed to join the BJP or face arrest. Meanwhile, over 50 AAP MLAs met Sunita Kejriwal today and told her that they want Arvind to remain Chief Minister and run the government from Tihar jail. With CM Arvind Kejriwal behind bars for two weeks, the Aam Aadmi Party is facing the daunting task of governance in Delhi. Your name is the first time. 55 AAP MLAs, including six ministers, met the Chief Minister's wife Sunita Kejriwal on Tuesday to express their unwavering support, even if it meant running the government from jail. We have heard that Arvind Ji has been in the of और आप मुख्यमंत्री थे दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री हैं मुख्यमंत्री बने रहेंगे मनीष सोडिया की गिरफ्तारी हुई आपने उनसे इस्तीफा लिया आपने सतेंद्र जैन से भाजपा ने ही दबाव बनाया जनता की आवाज बन गए आपने इस्तीफा लिया आज ये दोरे मापदंड क्यों हैं अरविंद केजरीवाल जी रनिंग द गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम तिहार जेल इज नो इजी टास्क द प्रेजन मैनुअल पोजेस लिमिटेशंस there is no facility of creating a CM office in jail right now. The Chief Minister won't be able to hold cabinet meetings or sign official documents inside the jail. The Lieutenant Governor will decide whether arrangements can be made in jail for Kejriwal to function as Chief Minister. The Chief Minister also needs to take court approval for any arrangements proposed. Following Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's incarceration, Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched a blistering attack on the opposition at a rally in Uttarakhand's Rudrapur. Har prasht par karivai chari rahe. Baut kam samay baaki rahe gaya hai. Tisre tam mein prashta chari par aur tej prahar hooga. Ye mein aapko guarantee dene aya. Delhi Minister Atishi has alleged the ED will target her and Saurabh Bharadwaj next and added that attempts were made to poach her from up. Mujhe ye kaha gaya ke ya to mein Bharti Janta Party join kar lo, apna political career bacha lo, apna political career baha lo, aur agar Bharti Janta Party nahi join kari, तो आने वाले एक महीने में ईडी द्वारा मुझे गिरफ्तार कर लिया जाएगा सौरभ भारद्वाज बैक्ड आतिशीस चार्जेस उनके किसी बहुत करीबी आदमी के माध्यम से ऑफर दिया गया है कि अगर आम आदमी पार्टी छोड़ दोगे तो बहुत बढ़िया करियर बना लेंगे और अगर नहीं छोड़ोगे तो जेल जाओगे एक महीने के अंदर अंदर ही तो खुल्लम खुल्ला धमकी है अब रात भर की प्लानिंग के बाद सवेरे निकलता है कि हमको ऑफर मिल रहा है अरे भारतीय जनता पार्टी भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ जीरो टॉलरेंस रखती है आप लोग कह रहे हैं वो लोग कह रहे हैं कि भ्रष्टाचारी को लाइए Narendra Modi ji ka BJP ka stand hai, Bhrashtachar ko hatai ye. Arvind Kejriwal's arrest could rule him out of the entire Lok Sabha campaign. 
the AAP leadership now faces the twin challenge of fighting the Lok Sabha elections and keeping the party together. Bureau Report, India Today. Sanjay Singh has become the first AAP Neta to get bail in the Likagate case. He's now been in jail for nearly six months. The Supreme Court today said that no money trail has been recovered in Sanjay Singh's case and that he can continue with political activities when he's out. And while the trial against Sanjay Singh will go on, the Enforcement Directorate did not oppose Sanjay's bail plea in court today. Arrested in October by the Enforcement Directorate, Six months later, AAP MP Sanjay Singh granted bail in connection with the alleged Delhi liquor scam. Sanjay Singh has been granted bail because ED did not argue their case at all and conceded on the bail because it was all apparent during the hearing and it was made clear by the judges. Honorable judges has made it clear before lunch that the, against Sanjay Singh there is no credible material to make a case against him. The bail order issued by the Supreme Court. A bench of Justices Sanjeev Khanna, Dipankar Datta and Prasanna B. Varale was hearing Sanjay Singh's plea in the excise policy case. The Enforcement Directory took a U-turn and decided to grant a concession to Singh after the top court asked them to consider if he's needed in further custody. The court said that as a matter of fact, no money has been recovered and the Q's turn approver did not name him in the first nine statements. The court warned ED, if we ultimately decide in favor of Sanjay Singh, we will have to record that prima facie he is not guilty of any money laundering and that may impact the trial. These observations were followed by a twist in the hearing with ED saying that it is not opposing the bail to Sanjay Singh. Aap welcomed Sanjay Singh's bail. I think that today is a very big day for the whole country. It is a very happy day, it is a very happy day, it is a very happy day, it is a very happy day. कि शायद कुछ लोग अब जेल से बाहर निकल के इस देश के लोकतंत्र को बचा लें। Meanwhile, BJP slammed AAP, saying now AAP can't accuse agencies of being involved in vendetta politics. This bail has been granted when ED, as you can see from the proceedings, has not opposed the bail of Sanjay Singh. From today onwards, the Aam Aadmi Party cannot claim, even for a moment. That any of the agencies, particularly the ED or the CBI, is indulging in any kind of vendetta politics. यदि ऐसा होता तो बेल को अपोज किया जाता। Sanjay Singh has become the first senior AAP leader to be granted regular bail in the money laundering case linked to the liquor policy. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and his former deputy Manish Sisodia remain under judicial custody in the same case. With Srishti Ojha, Bureau Report, India Today. Is it okay in the eyes of the voters for Arvind Kejriwal to run the Delhi government from jail? If he has to pick an alternative, who should it be? Could he emerge stronger or will this jail term and these corruption charges weaken him? Uh, on this week's edition of the Political Stock Exchange, I'm joined by Yashwant Deshmukh, lead cephologist at uh, Sea Water. It's his team that's put this uh, catty sample for us. It's a uh, 1955 people who've been polled in this sample. Ashutosh joins us, author, columnist, has been with the Ahmadmi party in the past, representing the AAP at the moment. Is Abhinandita Mathur, spokesperson of the Ahmadmi party. Uh, we've got Pratyush Kant from the Delhi BJP. And last but not least, Mudit Agarwal, spokesperson of the Congress. So let's take the first question on the political stock exchange this week. I want to walk across and take you through the responses that we've received in this week's edition of the political stock exchange. Here is the first question. How should Delhi be governed now? Kejriwal should rule from jail, say 47% of the overall respondents. Kejriwal should name another chief minister is the response of 22% of the respondents. President's rule should be imposed is the response of 23% of the overall respondents. Very naturally, those who identified themselves as opposition voters, 58% of them say Kejriwal should vote from jail. So they're more okay with the idea of the Delhi chief minister ruling from jail. Unlike NDA voters, 30% only said that Kejriwal should uh, govern from jail. 
the fact that he should pick another CM is clearly the choice for NDA voters. NDA voters want Kejriwal to pick another chief minister. Opposition voters would like him to continue from jail. And president's rule should be imposed is the response of 23% of the overall respondents. Let's come to the second question and then I'll go across uh, to our panel for responses. Should Sunita Kejriwal, the wife of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who's emerged as a force to reckon with, she's been in the limelight, fielding questions, doing these me media appearances. Should she become Chief Minister? Yes, this is quite natural, say 29% of the overall respondents. No, this will set a wrong example, is the response of 35% of the overall respondents. Someone else should be made Chief Minister is the response of 18% of the overall respondents. Clearly, once again, those who identified as opposition voters, 33% of them say it's okay for Sunita Kejriwal to be uh, Chief Minister. Very clearly, most of the NDA respondents say that no, this will set a wrong precedent. So with that said, let me go across to Yashwan Deshmukh first. Uh, from the first response that we've carried out, on how should how should Delhi be governed now? Uh, quite a quite a large number of respondents seem to think it's okay for Delhi to be run from jail. Forty-seven percent of the respondents saying Delhi should be run from jail. Uh, only about one fifth want Kejriwal to name another chief minister or want president's rule to be imposed. Well, yeah, Rahul, and that tells a lot about the Delhi saga. That probably. Uh not a really big number of people are considering that uh, uh, he will be kind of convicted or in that way. Uh, most of them are feeling that probably he will be coming out uh, after the interrogation gets over. And uh, uh, and significant number of the opposition voter, particularly so, are, are kind of uh, inclined to say that he should continue, no matter what, because uh, that is where they feel is the uh, is the uh, political opposition is. That's how they feel that uh, BJP has to be opposed uh, for not just for, for for what the cases are, but also for the uh, basically the Lok Sabha election and the way they want to proceed on that. Rahul? Okay. Ashutosh, on the question of Sunita Kejriwal and whether she can be chief minister, uh, it seems a very divided house with the largest number saying, no, this will set a wrong precedent. That's the response of 35% of the respondents in this poll. You've seen the Kejriwals. Do you think Sunita Kejriwal has what it takes to be Chief Minister? Can she do the job? I don't think, no. no. Whether, whether she's competent enough to be the Chief Minister, that's a different thing altogether. Whether if she's chosen as a Chief Minister, can she run the government? That's a different question altogether. But whether he, she should be the Chief Minister, that's a different question altogether. I think... Uh, I, Arvind Kejriwal, while going to the jail, did not uh, nominate anybody to take his place. That itself uh, is proof that he doesn't want anybody to take his place, whether it is Sunita Kejriwal or uh, anybody else, don't uh, to take any name. So I think the strategy is very clear that he wants, either he should continue or he will get bail earlier. So he can come back and resume his job or he wants the, uh, he wants to force the, uh, the left-hand governor or uh, the home ministry or the prime minister or the, or the Modi government to impose president rule. And maybe the thinking should be that then uh, it can generate a kind of sympathy for him. Because don't forget, uh, just after the parliamentary election, there will be a assembly election. And within six, seven months, that election is going to be held. Then he can uh, do two things. One, the imposition of the president rule, he can always blame and accuse that, say, look, we, I started some good work, but uh, 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 the, the president, during the president rule, that was uh, neutralized or, or nullified. So then he can uh, avoid the anti incumbency against their own government. And secondly, obviously, he must be feeling somewhere threatened down the line that if he's rep replaced by somebody else, in politics, you don't know uh, who's going to backstab. Pratyush Khan, the fact that 47% of the respondents are okay with the fact that Kejriwal should work from jail comes as a bit of a surprise for me because I would have imagined that more people will want Kejriwal to pick another uh, chief minister and they wouldn't think it's okay for Kejriwal to run the government from jail, but uh, half the respondents seem to think it's okay. That can't be good news for the BJP and what the BJP is trying to suggest. Well, Rahul, the, uh, the survey which you have got, I don't know what is the kind of the base of the survey is, but let me tell you one thing, that whatever Kejriwal does, it doesn't shock the people or leave them flabbergasted. You know, his whole politics is based on a fallacy. 
where nobody knows what he's going to do the next thing. He doesn't trust his shadow also. The man was the kingpin in this corruption. The man organized the corruption. The people who mentored him or people who really stood by him were the ones he dropped. He, ha he changes his team whenever he wants. Of all the people, I'm sure he trusts his wife more than he trusts anybody else. But that is what he wants. What the people of Delhi want is a different story. People of Delhi wants an honest chief minister of Kyle, who people voted for on the very fact that he said, Ki, Daag lagne ke pale resignation de dunga. Where is that Kejriwal gone now? This guy was the one Let who Abhinandita that it respond like to this in a meeting of a government meeting. The, the, the fact that the BJP says that Kejriwal claimed he was different, his actions in not choosing to resign and appoint somebody else as chief minister clearly show he's trying to cling on to power regardless of the charges he faces. He wants to stay on in some fashion in power. Well, part of this is uh, legal and it is all happening within a political context and I think that the people of this country, especially the people of Delhi, are able to see it. Since the time Arvind Kejriwalji became the chief minister, BJP has been absolutely like in a hate relationship, in a hateful relationship, not just with him, but also with the people of Delhi. And I think the citizens more or less know that the main agenda of the BJP is to finish the Aam Admi Party and Mr. Arvind Kedriwal because they're not able to defeat him electorally. Why I say this is, we've, you know, gone through one hurdle after another, after another, whether it is, you know, by changing a law, whether it is by putting an LG, whether it is stalling the work of Delhi citizens. This is non-stop. The assault on Arvind Kedriwalji and Aam Admi Party has been non-stop. But despite all those challenges, the Aam Admi Party has delivered a government that, a, a model of governance that was unthought of, you know, in, in Delhi, the kind of uh, Mohalla clinics, you know, looking at the primary health care system, uh, improving the public schools. These are things that the no, people did not imagine. No, I want to stick to the data. I want to stick to the interpretation. I I if he wasn't, okay. the people of Delhi yeah, would that, not that's do a, this. That's a rhetorical yeah. response to a question based on data. So I want to stay focused on the data because this is the political stock exchange after all. Is the Aam Aadmi Party different from other parties? Yashwant and his team asked this question. Let's take you through the responses that we got because they claim to be totally different. 40% of the overall respondents seem to think that yes, they are still uh, totally different. 16% say they are slightly different. 28% say they are the same as others. But 40% saying they are totally different. And 47% saying that Kejriwal should work from jail. Yashwan Deshmukh, this would lead one to wonder if I add these, whether Kejriwal is seeing a bit of sympathy in your poll. It seems that there is a certain underlying sympathy which is being reflected in these responses. Absolutely, Rahul. And, and um, uh, I just want to remind the viewers that uh, all along in the last, uh, uh, you know, 2015 onwards, all the mood of the nation polls that we do twice a year for India today, Mr. Kejriwal has been among the top rated chief ministers all along. So uh, never out of top 10 for sure, and but mostly in the top five for sure. So certainly he has an image. He, he, he is... Uh, he is not carrying that kind of uh, 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 problematic uh, in terms of corruption allegations, a uh, routine corruption that other political parties or other leaders uh, across the other uh, alliances are uh, generally prone of. He is not uh, uh, pretty much in that direction. So I guess that he carries uh, a, a certain degree of goodwill, particularly among the opposition voters. And that is getting reflected unless the, you know, uh, in the court and the rule of law, uh, it is substantially proven that, uh, uh, that, you know, he was beneficiary of corruption. No, but can I just pause, can I just corruption. pause you to say that one third of NDA voters also think that the Aam Aadmi Party is totally different. Now, I don't know whether they think that in a good way or a bad way, because the NDA voters could also be thinking that in a bad way. But uh, one third of the NDA voters also I, I, think that AAP is different. Rahul, they don't, these, these numbers don't surprise me, because one third of the NDA voters swing to Kejriwal in assembly election. They swing back to the BJP in the Lok Sabha election. This is no big deal. We have seen Aam Aadmi Party almost swinging 15 to 20% whenever the assembly elections happen. 
and BJP swinging 15 to 20 percent whenever the Lok Sabha elections happen. Okay. So, M Mudit Agarwal from the Congress, what do you make of these responses? 40 percent of overall respondents seem to think that AAP is different. 47 percent seem okay with Kejriwal uh, running Delhi from jail. Uh, so, uh, so uh, okay, so let me explain it in a different way. See, people of India intrinsically believe in democracy and democratic value. What they are seeing is the rise of authoritarian and autocratic regime of Mr. Modi in India. As I told you in my earlier, in your earlier show also, when you look at the, uh, the issue of corruption in electoral bonds or freezing of Congress accounts or uh, misuse of ED, CBI, as well as arresting of CMs, all these factors are coming together right now just before the elections and there's a sympathy in people towards India Alliance and its constituents because intrinsically as I said people of India believe in democracy so do you buy this things together, sympathy theory Ashutosh both so the arms together Yashwant and Congress talking about polls. sympathy that maybe the BJP has overplayed its card and maybe that's uh, leading, because I'm very surprised with the fact that one third of NDA voters are saying AAP is totally different, unless they're saying it that's different in a bad way, which is not coming out. But even they seem to think it's totally different. Uh, no, I think Yashwant has, Yashwant has a point because if you look at the, the number, the, 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 the vote share of the, of the uh, BJP in assembly election is something around 37%. When the parliament election it jumps to 54 and 56%. So that 18% that is, is, is overlapping to the Ahmadi party and the, and the BJP. So I, I got his point that when he's saying that 18% is overlapping and the, the same people vote for the Ahmadi party as well to the BJP. So is there. The biggest issue is that in India, if anybody goes to jail and he has certain amount of credibility, then it, it does generate uh, generate sympathy. But the vital factor okay. is during the election is whether that will that will uh, uh, whether that will get into votes. I That's think Ashutosh makes a very important point that you may feel something is wrong and therefore you are sympathetic. Will that feeling be so strong that it changes your voting behavior? I think that is clearly the litmus test. So I'll try and put this into data and try and explain this to you. So just bear with me as a, for a moment. I'll first show you the seat by seat breakup of every Lok Sabha seat in Delhi. We would look at what the BJP was at and what the AAP and uh, Congress are together. And then we look at the sympathy which is visible in this poll. We'll try and quantify that sympathy. And if that sympathy plays out, then how do the dynamics in Delhi change? So we'll just try and do that for a moment. Okay, so what I'll show you first is the vote share of parties as they stand. We've taken the BJP as one unit. We've taken Congress and AAP together as the second unit. Now, it doesn't work so perfectly arithmetically because these are different kinds of voters. But just for the purpose of this analysis, so bear with me. Chandni Chonk was the seat where the AAP Congress together, it's also a seat of the large Muslim population. Uh, Ashutosh knows a thing or two about Chandni Chonk. 44.4% uh, combined India Alliance vote share. Uh, BJP's vote share is about 53%. In Northeast Delhi, uh, BJP's vote share is 54%. The India Alliance combined vote share is 42%. In New Delhi, the India Alliance vote share is 43%. Uh, the BJP vote share is about 55%. In East Delhi, 55 for the BJP, uh, 42 for the uh, India Alliance. Now, let me show you the second data set. Okay, so I'll show you the second data set. This is for South Delhi uh, because as you move away, Northwest Delhi, West Delhi, South Delhi, the BJP's vote share goes up further and the India Alliance's vote share comes down to the 30. So it's those first four. So these seats really are a washout from my perspective in South Delhi, West Delhi and Northwest Delhi for the India Alliance to meaningfully take on the BJP is very, very difficult Okay, because the gap is too much. In South Delhi, BJP starts at 57, India Alliance at 40, even if they get all this. So even if there's some sympathy, BJP could come down from 56 to 50. India Alliance could go up from 40 to say 45. There's still a 5% gap. So these are not the seats that are in play. The seats that could come into play, and I'll show that uh, to our viewers right now. For the purpose of this calculation, we're saying if there is sympathy in support of Arvind Kejriwal, and I got political analyst Amita Tiwari to run these numbers for us. And if there is a 6% swing in favor of the India Alliance, if this arrest of Arvind Kejriwal generates a 6% swing, then how does it impact the potential seat share uh, results in Delhi? So then in a seat like Chandni Chonk, which is arguably where the India Alliance has its best chance, 
the India Alliance vote share could go up to 50%, the BJP vote share could come down to 47%. Even in Northeast, Northeast comes into play. It's a very tight seat suddenly. Uh, Northeast Delhi, 48, 48. So it's a very tight contest. It really becomes a very tight contest. And New Delhi is 48.8 versus 49.2. That again is a tight contest. And East Delhi is 49.3 for the BJP, 47.7 for the India line. So not so tight, but still in play. These are the four seats. Chandni Chonk, Northeast Delhi, New Delhi and East Delhi, which are in play. If there is a sympathy factor uh, working for Arvind Kejriwal on polling day, not today. Today there may be visible sympathy. It needs to extend till polling day for it to be meaningful. I'll show you the other three seats as well. There, even as I said to you earlier, there is some sympathy. The gap is too much. 54.5% in Northwest Delhi, even if there's a 6% sympathy. India Alliance only at 44 West Delhi 54 versus 43, South Delhi 51 versus 46. So there's still a big gap. So these three seats really sympathy won't make much of a difference. The first three seats uh, suddenly look different from the perspective of the India Alliance. I want to go across to Yashwan Deshmukh first for his interpretation of these numbers and the prospects of the sympathy which is visible in your data translating into altered voting patterns on polling day. Arithmetic Bilkur Tik is the only thing that we find in our tracker data that so far this sympathy is not really converting into votes. However, within the same sample, when we ask about their assembly voting behavior, that if the assembly election would be happening today, what where would you vote for? That happens. So what we are looking at are probably 55 and 45 kind of a vote share if you turn into a complete uh, you know hundred percent share. It goes just the opposite way in their assembly voting intention. So this calculation is by Mitab is absolutely point down that things can get open if this is a swing that happens in the Lok Sabha election. Uh, however, uh, so far what I have understood, these are likely to happen more in the assembly election and less in the Lok Sabha election at this point of time. Ashutosh, you know a thing about fighting elections in Delhi. I just ran the numbers, which is what I love doing. Fighting elections is not my jam. But what do you make of uh, the prospects of sympathy continuing till polling day and translating into altered voting behavior? Uh, Raul, two things. First of all, I would like to say that uh, to assume it, to assume that the that, that the collective voters of Ahmadi Party and the Congress in the previous election will stay with them. I think that, that there is a fallacy in that because every election is different and the, the, the people who have voted a particular party, uh, if they are disenchanted or as unhappy, can can in bulk and move to the to the, to the other, other political spectrum. The fact today is that in Delhi, the BJP is consistently maintaining 36% vote share since 2003 onwards. But in fact, you can go back into the 1998 onwards. So that is 36% vote share is the captive vote share in that sense. But Ahmadi Party's vote share and the Congress vote share, it's a fluctuating vote share. In parliament election, the Ahmadi Party gets 18% vote share, Congress gets 24% vote share, and the BJP goes to 56% vote share. But in assembly election, the Ahmadi Party takes a huge jump. 36% vote share jump from 18 to 54 and, and wins 62 seats out of, uh, out of 70. What I'm saying is that in parliament election, this sympathy might not work in favor of Ahmadi party in the Congress. But if an assembly election, this will certainly work because... No, but because in the assembly the... election, can AAP and Congress fight together? Because I, I AAP is see, already in see. government, they'll not see any reason of tying up with Modi's party. But Rahul, come what may, even if the even if the, the BJP is defeated in 2024 parliament election, AAP and the Congress have no possibility of contesting election in, 2000, in assembly election. That is for sure. So what I'm saying is, that uh, this the assembly election, because of the Arvind Kejriwal's cult, because of the Arvind Kejriwal's popularity, and because of there is no absence of a strong leader in the BJP, because 36 has to be raised to 44 if, if BJP wants to win election. But that 8% pull is not there despite Narendra Modi because there is no strong leader who can challenge Arvind Kejriwal. So in assembly election, this sympathy will work. And, and, uh, Ratyush Kant of the BJP, is this something that concerns you that while there may be some sympathy on the surface during the Lok Sabha election, it may not really lead to changed behavior. But what Ashutosh and Yashwant are saying is that in the assembly election context, because of what has happened, you've created a level of sympathy which will help Arvind Kejriwal and the Aam Admi Party ward off anti-incumbency. 
Rahul, firstly, I have not seen any kind of sympathy for Kejriwal this time around. I have seen his political growth in the city, but unfortunately, this time when he went to jail, I did not see anything, and I was very closely watching that. But let me be the devil's advocate here and take your debate one step forward. Why do you forget that Congress had such voters that even if it was down and out, they stuck by Congress because they hated Kejriwal. They hated Kejriwal for simple reason because Kejriwal demolished Sheila Dixit, demolished Congress, and they were all down and out. But still, there was a percentage of voter who stood by Congress. And now when Congress has tied its hand, look, today Congress is totally divided in Delhi. Ajay Makan, five weeks ago, did a press conference and said, look at this Kejriwal, he made all the money on his tweet, sitting on the BJ Congress headquarters, he did his press conference. Arvinder Singh Rabli has backed out not fighting election. Harun Yusuf is totally opposed to him. All the old Sheila school guys are totally opposed to Kejriwal. So is true for the voters of Delhi. Those who stuck by Congress. Today they cannot absolutely accept the fact that they have to go and vote for Kejriwal because they saw those 10 difficult years of Congress but still they stood by Congress. So today when J.P. Agarwal is going to fight in Chandni Chowk, 90% of the old Congress are going to desert him because they cannot tolerate Congress. And today they feel cheated. They may not vote for BJP, but they, must not, they may not go and vote at all. Or they may go and vote for Nota, but they will not vote for Kejriwal. In this debate, everyone is missing out that point. These hardcore Congress voters feel cheated, feel deceived, because their senior leaders... Suddenly the BJP spokesperson is very worried about Congress voters. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, Pratyushji. I've never seen a BJP spokesperson so worried about Congress voters. Now I told I'm being the I'm being the devil's advocate. I, I told I told you I'm being the devil's advocate here. I was just taking this debate forward because the what Yashwanji was saying, you're only thinking from one perspective. If you have you must think from different perspective before you come and see six percent swing, four percent swing. Politics is not arithmetic. It's a very difficult game with too many things involved in it. So I was just taking it one step forward. And I'm sorry if you didn't like it. No, no, which is fine. It's totally good. It's all in the spirit of things. It's nice for BJP vote, uh, leaders to also worry about Congress voters. No problem with that. If you look at the vote share, Modi Tagarwal, of the Congress in previous elections, the BJP spokesperson actually makes a very compelling argument that these are people who don't like Kejriwal, which is the point Ashutosh made as well. Just to imagine that now AAP and Congress are together and therefore there will be seamless transferability of votes from Congress to AAP and vice versa won't happen because the AAP voter doesn't like the Congress and the Congress voter doesn't like the AAP. Uh, so, okay. So, I know a thing or two about elections. I have overseen over nine Lok Sabha elections in Delhi and numerous assembly and MCD elections. So, I'll talk from that experience. If you look at 2019... Let's, let's look at a seat like Chani Chowk. There was a 9% difference between Congress and BJP candidate. If you, if you combine Congress, our party voter, and BJP, the difference was 9%. But what people forget is that time there was no alliance between Congress and our party. So most of the people, you know, most of the voters who would have either, would have probably voted for the alliance, did not vote because they saw there was no chance of these party beating BJP. That's the difference which has come right now. That's one difference which is there from 2019 election. Second, the authoritarian tendencies of BJP government, as I said, people in India are intrinsically democrat. They hold democratic values. What they have seen in last five years, especially, and especially the kind of things which have come out in the last one month, people are shifting no, towards but we don't know India that. alliance. No, no, the problem that's is, the second no, no, that's so your belief, you, but you have no evidence no, to back that. So I have, I have, because when I talk to people, when I talk to even BJP-minded people, I see that feeling there. And that is, in a way, you know, you can see a hint of that in your survey also, where you see NDA voters also not liking what Mr. Godi... No, Modi, while that Mr. is Modi partly is right correct. Now. No, so Mudit, while that's that partly second. correct... Third, no, no, one second, second. The thing is, they may be unhappy. Will they change the party they vote for. I think it really, Abhinandita, comes down to that. They may so be expressing thing, unhappiness. Just... Does that expression of unhappiness re result in altered voting behavior? Will they change their mind about who they vote for? That's really see, what it comes down to. See, uh, Rahul, this is what I was talking about. When you combine two or three different factors, I, I see that respond? change happening in Delhi and the swing which is required for India Alliance to win, all those seats will happen because of a couple of factors that I've said. Not one factor, but a couple of factors. When you have all of them together, that swing will happen. That's what I meant. Abhinandita. 
so yes so you know i have a couple of ob observations i obviously don't agree with the bjp spokespersons but i make these uh, observations not only as an aam aadmi party spokesperson but also as somebody actually from chandni chowk since we have uh, spent a bit of time talking about chandni chowk i do think that you know the 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 surveys that you've showed today are very positive for us and i think that the reason is one that people of delhi like and have faith in arvind kejriwal number two that you know bjp lies utterly exposed as a corrupt party and also as a collective of you know corrupts from all parties that get whitewashed or the bjp is welcoming all the corrupts and the third is that truly there is a you know there can be a change in voter behavior i mean we have seen that you know the bjp uh, Uh, the, the 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 people of delhi continued to uh, elect bjp in the mcd and now they've shifted to the aam aadmi party primarily because they've also tried and tested the bjp they okay. were not satisfied they've also seen the aam aadmi party's work in the assembly and i think that is what is going to happen because you know you look at the mps that the bjp had given uh, delhi and uh, you know nobody was on the ground nobody was on the scene okay so, so i want to come now to the next question which is a very important to... question about what happens to arvind kejriwal once he comes out of jail remember sanjay singh got bail so at some point in time it's possible we don't know how long it will be that kejriwal too could get bail so what does kejriwal's post prison political career look like in the eyes of these respondents in this political stock exchange done by sea voter uh, he will be a weak leader say 21% of the respondents there will be no real change in his position say 21% of the respondents Almost 40% of the respondents, four in six, say he will emerge stronger. AAP will be finished. Are only one twelfth, uh, only 12%. So one tenth of the respondents say AAP will be finished. Almost 40% are saying AAP will emerge stronger. Yashwant, you are where did you find out? BJP is not your poll. It will be good. I don't know who is talking about. This is all bogus. 40% of the respondents. Who are these people who are saying AAP will emerge stronger? You are you are on mute, Yashwant. is the same voter rahul which switch swings over to aam aadmi party from bjp in the assembly elections i don't see any contradiction or any surprise in the data you know i mean there that's the kind of a core vote in you know which would be sympathetic for any opposition cause for sure and then within the nda rank and file the vote for those who vote and switch over to aam aadmi party in assembly election i think that's almost the same kind of a split so i am not surprised as i mentioned unless unless in the case and unless in the legal binding the cases are proven some court decision comes in you know something of that Ashutosh, sort ashutosh do you buy this like in uh, the court today i don't know what uh, prompted it but the ed basically told the judge that we don't have financial trail against sanjay singh and sanjay singh then got bail now the point that is coming out in the survey is that almost 39% of the respondents think that kejriwal will emerge stronger once he comes out is that your sense as well ashutosh I don't think that we are going to jail is uh, is a kind of handicap for any politician in this country. Take the example of Lalu Prasad Yadav or Jayalalita or Karunanidhi uh, or or anybody. They all uh, remain uh, powerful in their own political parties and they all bounce back as a chief minister or in in, in the saddle. So uh, why why should be think why should be thought that Arvind Kejriwal in post prison scenario will be weakened? I don't see that is happening. See the only thing that can that can neutralize arvind kejriwal is a very very strong chief ministerial candidate from the bjp unfortunately that is not happening so arvind kejriwal is having a free uh, has a free run like narendra modi at the national level has a free run so unless modi is challenged by a strong leader for the prime ministership under the arvind kejriwal is challenged i don't see arvind kejriwal losing any grip on the party and in 2020 uh, five assembly elections Uh, bjp will be in a position to challenge arvind kejriwal come what may whether he is contest from the jail or without jail pratyush khan the fact that uh, 40% odd respondents seem to think that kejriwal will emerge stronger once he comes out of jail sanjay singh is already out of jail at some point in time kejriwal will come out too and the respondents in this poll who largely and ordinarily are typically very pro modi seem to think kejriwal will emerge stronger Firstly let me tell you that people of Delhi are em emotionally invested in this man called Kejriwal it is not like Lalu's politics or Kananidhi's politics you have to understand Delhi politics people from all over the state you come from Bihar 
you are identified with the caste, you come to Delhi and you become a Delhiite. Same is true for South Indians, for any part of the country you come, you become one here. And people of Delhi genuinely thought that here is a man who is bringing change. And I'm sure even Ashutosh thought that that's why he joined this party. What happened? Every promise he made to the people of the city, slowly, 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 they thought they were cheated. Now his going to the jail was the final nail in the coffin. People have realized that he is no better than Lalu Yadavs of the world. And this is where the real change is going to take place. Just look at the parliament election. BJP will 7-0. There will be no fight here. Because the vote bank which uh, Kejriwal had was unique. They were richest of the rich, the poorest of the poor. Everybody believed in his politics. He's the man who's bringing change here. Now his going to jail has defeated that whole concept which he has created thanks to media also to quite an you know, extent. This I'm sorry backlash you're going to see Rahul in this election and in coming 25 elections. See, I never intervene, please don't intervene. So this is what you're going to see here that in 2025 this core voter base is gone. You know, but, the, but the thing Ashton is, like you said, he's like you know, now. Here, here's a point I want to make, and I want to and I want Yashwan. Okay, I want Yashwan Deshmukh to respond. If things were the way they stood, BJP was romping home on all seven seats of Delhi. Now this arrest of Arvind Kejriwal has created uncertainty in the air. It is possible, as Pratyush says, that the sympathy doesn't result in any change in voting behavior and BJP still wins. But they've basically now got this sympathy. So they're obviously confident they can ride through the sympathy and still win. Uh, or have they now unleashed a Frankenstein that's beyond their control? They too don't know how much sympathy there will be on voting day. No, here I actually agree with the BJP spokesperson that as far as data is concerned, BJP is winning 7-0 even as on today, hands down. These, the sympathy is not really converting into vote swing as such in our data. That is for sure. Uh, and, uh, and probably just the image of uh, Prime Minister Modi is carrying the BJP all along. And that is what matters for them at this point of time. However, Rahul, if this was one, hand, one, one nation, one election, if this would have been one nation, one election, then probably you would have seen that sympathy at play. BJP might have swept 7-0, but it would have been Ahmadmi party with an upper hand as far as the assembly elections so are concerned. So the context that is different because Prime Minister Modi is on the ticket and that changes everything. Abhinandita, does that concern you that this is really more about the assembly election and the Lok Sabha election because Prime Minister Modi is on the ticket, everything else then goes out of the window. People just look at Modi's face and they vote and whatever sympathy there is, the AAP may benefit from that in 2025. Well, you know, on the one hand, I think that there will be a shift because the BJP lies exposed in a way that it wasn't in 2019. I think that we have to give that some weightage. The other is that it's not surprising for anyone to assume or to predict that BJP will win because, you know, by hook or by crook, BJP will win. Even the common person on the road, if you talk to them and they will say things like, you know, kisi ko bhi button dabao, BJP jitegi, BJP jiti nahi bhi, to bhi wo sarkar bana degi. So there is all this perception about BJP where a voter also feels whether or not they vote for the BJP, but well, ha, I got to BJP, which is not necessarily true as we have seen in many elections recently. I think that, and there are some, uh, and these are people from Chandni Chowk that I must say, who've been voting for BJP. And lately, they've been calling us and supporting us and telling us that, you know, ye ab bhot ho gaya, hume ye nahi chahiye. Yaar, ye to bhot ho gaya. You know, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. We know who's corrupt, who's not corrupt. This is ridiculous. So there will be a shift. And, you know, these are people who are... Okay. Who are yeah. Purana Delhi Walas, who are, you know, mixed bunch. You know, so there will be a shift. The middle class voter is going to... We uh, don't, do a shift though. We don't know that. You're, you're angry okay. with the BJP so for troubling their sure. favorite leader. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, AAP is clearly hoping that there will be sympathy even in the Lok Sabha elections. BJP thinks and whatever think, will yeah, happen will happen is, in the assembly is, elections. We don't know yet. And that is what creates this uncertainty. Nobody, frankly, knows what will actually happen on polling day. But it's built that level of uncertainty which earlier there wasn't in the Delhi election. I want to come to the last question on the show this evening. Uh, AAP claims BJP received money from Sharat Reddy, who is the main accused in the liquor policy case. What do you think of this? 35% of the overall respondents say AAP is diverting attention. One-fourth say it could be true. About one-fifth say it seems substantive. 
13 percent say they don't know. AAP diverting it in a poll where there's been a lot of sympathy for AAP. One th more than one third say AAP is diverting attention. Now, but does something like this, Sarat Reddy, the charges, the electoral bonds, is that too complex and dense, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, for it actually to translate to the real voter? Or do they, uh, do you think they're able to, by following television, social media, digital, everything, pick up these things and form an opinion or think they only understand mota mota and don't get caught in these intricacies? People do not go into details, Rahul. That is for sure. That is why I always say it's less of a legal battle and more of a battle of narrative building. We will have to figure it out in the coming days to check on what kind of narrative is played on both sides of the aisles, you know, how they are playing it out. And uh, and certainly we can sense, we can we got an example of that in today's show, how it is going to play out. Uh, and, and that's going to intense the fight a, a lot. What I feel that earlier in the previous shows, uh, we have always seen that, uh, you know, just because Congress was very, very aggressive against AAP in the last few years uh, on the particular liquor, liquor policy scam and other things. I was very interested to see how this is going to play out on the ground. That no, is still something which Ashtosh is mentioning. That is something which is still to be seen on the ground. Yes, picture is baki hai. You can know, you know the cast and crew, you don't know what the box office response will be, but it's a different picture from the one that the voters were expecting and therefore what will the response be really now becomes one of the key questions of 2024. I want to thank our guests, Ashutosh, Yashwan Deshmukh, Pratyush Kant, Mudit Agarwal, Nabhinandita Mathur for joining me on the news track. Everyone has an opinion, we have the data. What we try and do is use solid research stratified scientific sampling to try and give you a sense of how voters are looking at the big issues of the day. So you then have a sense of which way the political winds are blowing. And Congress Member of Parliament Rahul Gandhi will be filing his nomination from Wayna tomorrow. But ahead of his visit, a full-blown Congress versus left fight has broken out. Kerala Chief Minister Pinari Vijayan has lashed out at Rahul Gandhi, asking him why is he not taking on the BJP directly. Here's more. The battle for Vainad is creating deep divides in the India bloc. Kerala Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan has launched an all-out attack on Rahul Gandhi for contesting the Lok Sabha election from Vainad. Uh, Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, and the role of Rahul Gandhi, you put up on the area Kerala itu mana? Surya itu mana? Negeri mana? Negeri yang betul. Tapi BJP yang negeri mana? Negeri itu mana? Negeri yang betul. Ibu dae LDF mana? Lebih berdaya na sekali. LDF ni negeri mana? Negeri lebih rendah. Calling the left an important ally, the Congress played down the Chief Minister's remarks. Rahul Gandhi and rival candidate CPI's Annie Raja will be filing nomination papers from Vyanad on Wednesday morning. Ahead of the nomination, the Congress faced some embarrassment as the SDPI, the political arm of the banned Islamist outfit Popular Front of India, announced its support to the Granol Party. Kerala till, you are the Asia, Sahajan, and Padigal in Chuanda, Varan Boganda, the Renjadipil. Kerala till Namukariam, Madani Rebet Chabacha, the Randamunanigal and Ulla, Randamunanigalu. Kalau boleh desa dalam tu ni rakyat yang berisau dikem bol, pasca Bengal itu kongsi sum, CPM orang macam mana serikat ya na, desa dalam tu, BJP berita mai beri ceri, sekte pernah mana rakyat ni lebar ni perlu, mana mana, kita mana sila kau nada. The SDPI support to Congress has stirred a huge row, with the BJP accusing the Congress of using radical groups for political gains. Seeking the support of the PFI, is it a secularist mood? You are always Working for the anti-national elements. In the entire party of the election, the Desha was able to win. The BJP had to be given Congress and Pindar Road. Because they were the leaders. Under the party, they were the leaders. CPI is not. This Aryan Madhya Pradesh party, Aryan party, is not. It is Alil Ka Certificate Road party. That is not. I am saying that this Jamaat Islami is the most important party. I am saying that this is the most important party. I am saying that this is the most important party. 
The left has always questioned the wisdom of Rahul Gandhi contesting from Wayanad as the BJP is not the main contender in Kerala. While Rahul Gandhi is being accused of running away from the real fight in Hindi heartland, the Congress has defended the decision to contest from the safe seat. Bureau report, India Today. This is where we wrap up the news track tonight. For your time and your trust, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, good night.